Hello everyone, welcome to Good Film Hunting, a podcast about an average couple who are on the hunt for some good movies. In today's world, we are consuming more media than ever, perhaps more passively than ever. But we believe that by documenting and discussing the media we intake, how and what we intake will change for the better. It is important that we don't just become another consumer, but a participant, seeking to engage with the media we consume, so that we can see how our view of the world affects how we perceive it, and how it affects how we perceive the world. In this podcast, we are not only on the hunt for some good movies, but on the hunt for a good discussion. So, lean in, participate, and enjoy. We like to watch a little um, skits of some sort before we get started, whether it's Blimey Cow or Stephen He or Daniel Thrasher. Helps us get in the mood. Okay. In case everyone, anyone was wondering, you know, how we just got so perfectly into the mood. We're like, yeah. wow, spot on every time. No, they're yeah. always so zesty. So zesty. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, we are talking about another movie. We're talking about Fiddler on the roof, or as we like to call it, Riddler on the foof. Yes. Yes, perfect. Um, but before we delve into our take on this um, movie, Savannah, how are you doing this evening? Pretty good. Pretty good? Yeah. Emotionally, mm-hmm. good, doing well. Yeah, that's good. My eyes feel a little glazed over. It could be from all the screens and driving I did today. All the screen. We you weren't looking at screens and driving, were you? Only yeah, stop signs. Well, it's stop signs. No, <laughs> just kidding. No, there are moments where I adjust things, but like I don't text and Moments drive. where you adjust things. Mm, yes. We'll leave hmm. it at that. All right, so before we delve into this, I'll give a brief breakdown of the episode for those who might be listening for the first time. Um, we'll start, I'll start by uh, listing out some facts for, to Savannah about the movie that she may or may not know. We'll kind of share our history and general sp- thoughts on the movie spoiler free for the most part um we'll go into our favorite moment of the movie and because this one's a musical uh maybe our favorite song too um then we have a rating system with four categories that we'll rate on a scale of one to five that'll kind of bring us to our overall rating general thoughts whether we'd recommend it or not and then we'll move on to our next movie not tonight because it's too late for that unfortunately but yeah, I'll send it the time. Tomorrow, maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So, are you ready for, ready for some facts, Savannah? Yes, James. I'm ready for some facts. Good. I'm, I'm glad you're ready for some facts. All right. Let's start with this movie's release date, our favorite. When was this released? 1974. Very close. 1975. You're... Go back. 1972. One more. 1971. Yes. Really? Really. Wow. I don't think I've really, like, ever... I mean, I'm sure I have, but, like, mm-hmm. I don't really recall seeing a movie that was made in the 70s. Really? That was a while ago. Yeah, that was 50 years ago. I know. That's crazy, right? 50 years ago. I know. Wow. It looked pretty good for a 70s movie. I know. Um, it was released November 3rd, 1971. Uh, it was distributed by United Artists. It has a runtime of 181 minutes, so three hours. This is a very long movie. <laughs> um, it actually has the, uh, when I looked it up, it's defined as an epic historical musical or something like that. Interesting. It's like, yeah, I could see that. I guess this would be fall into the category of an epic. It's very big. Um, yeah, lengthy. Lengthy. Um, you will not believe this. Guess what its budget was. Probably something really low. Yeah. I don't know. Guess. Ten million? One, one more below that. Nine million? Nine million. Wow. By far the lowest. <laughs> That's of crazy. Any movie. That was really low. I know. Um, guess what its box office was. What? 83.3 million. Wow, it's quite a return. I know. Investment. Very, it's very good. That's nine times. I know. It made it the, uh, the highest grossing film of 1971. An accomplishment. I know. Hmm. Different times. Like our Avengers movies grossing, you know, two billion dollars. Oh my goodness. Um Dag. So this movie was based off the musical Fiddler on the Roof, uh, with music by Jerry Bach, uh, lyrics by Sheldon Harnick, 
and the book by Joseph Stein. Um, the book was called Tevye and His Daughters. In Tevye. Uh, sorry, Tevye. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Tevye. Um, Tevye and His Daughters um, and Other Tales by Shalom Alakim, I think is how you say it. So yeah. I guess it's a book based off of some other tales or books, like a compilation of stories, which then turned into a musical, which then turned mm. into the uh, the movie itself. Um, the movie itself was directed by Norman Frederick Jewison, who was alive from July 21st, 1926 to January 20th, 2024. So actually he passed away very recently. Mm, yeah. Like very recently. I didn't realize that. He was that. old. Yeah. He was, he was 98. Oh, that's pretty good. He almost made it to his entry. He was so close. I think, I wonder if he's Jewish. Because no, I think, he's Canadian. Oh. Yeah. Because I think Jew are Jews a long living race? I don't know. I'm not just saying that because it's Bible, but I'm there. Oh, I honestly don't know. Okay. No, Lebanon, Lebanese people are Lebanese, really long. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, he was he was a Canadian. Um, he was known for directing a film which were which addressed uh, topical social and political issues, often making controversial or complicated subjects accessible to mainstream audiences. Hmm. Um, the music from this, uh, obviously, you know, it came from a musical, but it was adapted for the screen by John Williams, who, as we know, did Star Wars, Indiana Jones, all those fancy movies. Um, as far as actors, it has uh, Topal, I think, yeah, no, Topol, Topol, I looked this up earlier, as Tev Tevye? Tevye. Tevye. Um, he was alive from September 9th, 1935 to March 8th, 2023. Wow, not that long ago either. Yeah. Um, he was a, an Israeli actor, singer, and illustrator. He's best known for a portrayal of Tevye, obviously. Uh, the lead role in stage, the musical Fiddler on the Roof. Um, he performed the role more than 3,500 times from 1967 through 2009. Wow. That is crazy. That's a lot. I know. He probably knew this like the back of his hand. <laughs> I know. He must have just thought that's who he was. I know. Um, it starred Norma Crane as Goldie. Um, she was like... I think it's Golda. Golda, sorry. Yeah, Golda. the E's are all like eh. Uh, apparently, okay. Sorry. Uh, from November 10th, she was alive November 10th, 1928 to September 28th, 1973. It's not that long. Um, Rosalind Harris as Seidel, and then Michelle Marsh as Huddle. Um, neither one of them have any particular credits that I'm familiar with. Um, Rosalind Harris does a lot of Broadway stuff. Um... Overall, the movie adaptation was very faithful to the stage adaptation. There were little additional scenes here and there, like a lot of the like a revolutionary commentary was a little more heavy-handed mm -hmm. in the movie. Um, they changed up the song tradition a bit at the beginning to fit it more. I'm not sure exactly how. But this was nominated for a lot of awards. Um, it was nominated for Academy Award Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, um, also nominated for Best Art Direction. It did win Best Cinematography and Best Scoring Adaptation, um, and it did receive a nomination for Best Sound. So it didn't win a lot as far as Academy Awards go, but it was definitely recognized. Hmm. Um, a remake of the film, directed by uh, Thomas Greta Kyle. Gerwig. No. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> no, she's doing Narnia or something like that. She doesn't talk to this. Um, it's currently in development. So, we'll see how that goes. I don't know. Can you top this one? Could you top this one? This adaptation? I don't know. Maybe you could. Maybe. It's yeah. possible. We, ha we do have bigger and better tools now, but we'll, we'll kind of go into our commentary about what we thought about this and why I feel like it'd be kind of hard to in a lot of ways. Um, so those were all the, the facts I had. Nice. 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 Um, so what is your general history, if you have any, with this movie, and what are your general thoughts on it? 
So my history with this movie is the episode of Wonder Pets called Fiddler Crab on the Roof. Oh. Where there's a fiddler crab and he's stuck on the roof and then they need to save him. Wow. So yeah, I and I I found out later that that was like based on a movie or something, and like I was like told or I I thought it was like an adult movie, not like an mm. adult movie, but like mm-hmm. not a movie for kids. Yeah. Um. So that's all. That's all. That's your history. Yeah. Until like last year when I saw someone post about it on Instagram and stuff, and then we talked about it. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Fiddler crab on the roof is my history. Well, there you go. What's well, a unique history with this yeah. one? Um, what were your general thoughts about it? I was surprised, perhaps, by it. Oh? I wasn't expecting it to be as, like, big as it was. Yeah. I didn't expect there to be so little dialogue. Really? Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of dialogue. All really? Sense I didn't think there was very much dialogue. I feel mm. like it was mostly singing. There was a lot of singing. Yeah, I think there was fine. There was more singing than I expected. Okay. Um, there were a couple other unexpected things. Like what? Like, hmm. I don't know. I just, I just, I had no expectations going into it. Mm. So like, I didn't really know. So you didn't really expect the ups and downs it was going to take, or the themes it was going to address. Yeah, maybe. Or it was kind of like a. It was. It had a plot. Like, mm-hmm. that moved forward, but it was kind of, like, random, too. Yeah. Like, pieces of stories here and there. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, yeah. I thought it was interesting. So, interesting. Does that equate to good yeah, or no, bad? Yeah, no, I thought it was or... good. I thought okay. It was good. Okay. Um, my history with the movie is I saw it for the first time a few years ago with my family. We I remember we split it in half because it was so long. We watched it and... Uh, Three increments. <laughs> um, but yeah, we... Beforehand, I'd heard of it a lot from my mom because she was always referencing um, If I Were a Rich Man. <laughs> Such a good song. The song. Um, and I remember her playing that for us, like like a YouTube video of the scene, way before I'd even seen the movie. Um, and I didn't really know anything about the plot going into it the first time I watched it. Um, I just remember enjoying it a lot and going into it this time around. I probably enjoyed it even more so. I do have some more obvious criticisms of the the movie itself. I haven't you know seen the play, obviously, um, that we'll go into. But yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was this movie is obviously very big and very grand and very epic. Um, I just love the the energy that it has. Mm-hmm. Um, just that everything feels very real and authentic and the choreography is very crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, like you were commenting on the, uh, the graveyard scene being crazy, yeah. but like the fact that it was just so well choreographed, like, mm-hmm. man, they just don't do this anymore kind yeah. of thing. Um, granted audiences have changed a little bit, so it's not like people are pining for those types of movies to be made no. anymore. <laughs> Um, I thought the, the themes that it touched, I've always, even the first time I watched it, I thought the theme of, like, the main character, forgive me, Tevia? Tevia. 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 Um, him, you know, kind of being set in his ways, mm-hmm. but, like, wrestling with, like, what's, what should he let go of mm-hmm. as, you know, his daughters are not following, as the whole song introduces, tradition. Um, to the point where, you know, he makes a decision at the end, which we'll go more into, that's kind of almost, it seems a little extreme in some ways. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I think none of the characters, and all the characters are far from perfect in this, especially, you know, Tevia. But I feel like... He's endearing, though. He's very endearing, and he's very relatable in a lot of ways. He reminds um, me of Papa. Does he? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a fun one. I really like this one, but we'll I'll break it down a bit more as we go into our rating system. Um, did you have a favorite moment of the movie or a favorite song or both? I liked Tradition. I keep getting that stuck in my head. Do you? Yes. Um, favorite moment. I don't know. There are definitely some funny moments. Funny moments, yeah. But like, sad in like a funny way. Like, oh, like what? Like when Seidel and Hoddle get, no, Model get married. Mm. 
and like the guy that she was going to get married to is just kind of salty. <laughs> and like I felt bad for him. I know. But I can't awkward. blame her. Can't blame like a 21 year old for not wanting to marry like a 60 year old. I know. I know. I honestly like low key have sometimes I've had nightmares about that. Have you? Yes. Oh, that's not good. Not <laughs> like that. Um, but anyway, yeah, I would say. Hmm. Yeah. There were some there were some funny moments sprinkled throughout. Yeah. Um favorite song. Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably have to give it to tradition too. It's just it's it opens, it's a banger. Mm, I feel banger. like I feel like the rest of the songs are good. Some of them are definitely less memorable than others. Yeah, like Tradition um, and If I Were a Rich Man are like the only two I can remember. Yeah. Um, favorite moment is probably when Tevia is yelling at Gold, Golde? Golde? Golde. 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 I don't know. Something like that. Golde. Yeah. Is yelling at her about wanting to see the machine, the new sewing machine now, talking about being the man of the house, and how he's going to see it now. Oh. And it's very, like, worked up. And he walks and opens the door for, like, half a second. It's like, okay, we're good to go. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go into our rating system. We've got four categories we'll go through and rate on a scale of one to five individually. Um, that includes our overall entertainment, the production quality, the writing, and as well as the content. Um, so Savannah, starting with you, scale of one to five, what would you give this for entertainment? A big yawn, obviously as one. <laughs> mm, no, um, I would say probably a four. Okay. It wasn't like, it didn't have me on like the edge of my seat and like mm -hmm. the romance was just subtle enough to where it wasn't like super exciting. Yeah. Um. Could have been more so. Mm, okay. But, yeah, I'd give it a four. Like it kept me interested. Um, I did almost fall asleep a couple times. You definitely fell asleep a couple times towards the end. No, <laughs> Do I dozed off. Mm. I didn't um, like you. But yeah, I give it a four. Okay. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was fun. Yeah. It was very funny. I would give this a four as well. I was very close to giving it a five. Um Of course you were. <laughs> of course. I think it starts off really strong. And I think yeah. the first half of it is really strong. But then the second half is kind of messy and kind of oddly paced and kind of everywhere. And it gets slower and it's not as memorable and it's not as big. And part of that's just the story is kind of becoming sadder for the characters, especially, you know, Tevia and. His world is just kind of coming apart. And, you know, it, it ends on a very solid note. Um, but it wasn't quite dramatic enough for me to, like, get still give it a five. Yeah, yeah. I think if it was a little more dramatic, like, in with as far as the relationships. Yeah. And just the story itself and, like, the even the drama with the Russians. Yeah. Like, if it was just a little more dramatic, I feel like it would have given it a five. It was yeah. very much like a very slow-paced, like... Yeah. Stroll. Yeah, yeah. Very casual. Like, the story itself is not super... Like, for a three-hour movie, the most of what you're seeing is just dancing <laughs> and choreography. Which, to me, knowing what that, that this is what this movie is is fine, because mm -hmm. it is done well for the most part, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and if you don't have expectations, that's supposed to be something else. But it's just, even that part, you know, became very lackluster mm -hmm. towards the second half. Um, but yeah, the, the first half, like, obviously, I mentioned the choreography was a lot of fun. The characters were just very absurd. Um, there was a lot of loud, colorful energy happening. Mm -hmm. I think of the, the opening scene in Tradition, where Tevye is talking to the audience, kind of explaining the world, mm -hmm. the village that they've built up. Um, and he's talking about, like, this one guy who sold a horse to another person, and he was told it was six, but it was really 12. And, mm -hmm. like, he comes in and makes, like, a snarky comment, and everyone just comes in and starts arguing with each other mm -hmm. about it. And to me, that was very, just very silly and very cartoony. Very but, like, quaint. Yeah. This whole movie, I feel like if it could be summed up in a word, quaint would be it. You think so? Yeah. 
Yeah. But it was a close five, very close five. Um, yeah, four, four is what I'll give it because it definitely begins to drag a bit. Um, overall production quality. This is where we kind of talk about the cinematography, the acting, the casting, the costume design, the music. What would you give this on a scale of one to five? Probably also four. Okay. Yeah. Because it was, I thought it was, I thought it was well done. Mm -hmm. um, even though I don't like musicals. <gasps> Shock. No. Sorry, Spam everyone. doesn't like musicals. I don't like musicals, which is so weird because like I'm a musical person. Or I was once upon a time. Mm. And like I enjoy music, but just for some reason, I just don't enjoy musicals. Yeah, that's right on. Like I am counting down the moments until the songs are over. <laughs> um, however, I think the only musical like I don't feel that way about is The Sound of Music. Really? Because I know all the songs really well. And like, mm -hmm. and also just because there, there's a lot of dialogue to make up for it. Yeah. There's just there, the dialogue to music ratio was not very... Love so, that. I mean, going off on a tangent, why do you, what is it about musicals that doesn't appeal to you? I don't know. Something about the way my brain works, like, it's hard for me to follow a story when it's being sung. Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't mind the occasional short song, but, like, if, I, I prefer it to be, like, if it's going to be a musical, like, 70% mm -hmm. dialogue, 30% music. Okay. And this movie was, like, 70 So, do you, so there's this one, where obviously... They're kind of, the characters are explaining what's on their minds or their hearts through music mm -hmm. instead of giving like a monologue. Yeah. And then there's like the Disney musical, right? Where mm -hmm. it's, sometimes that's the case, but more often than not, it's just music that's fun and jaunty and doesn't necessarily add to the story. Yeah. So do you prefer one over the other or? Um, yeah, I think I do prefer the fun and jaunty because like I'm also thinking about La La Land. Mm-hmm. That is even too much music for me. Okay. Like too much singing. Okay. Even though that's not super related to the story either, that's more like the fun and jaunty. Mm -hmm. I just, like, I can handle, like, Frozen, for example, with, mm -hmm. like, the couple songs that they're, that, are, that are going on. Yeah. But, like, this and La La Land and, oh, is there, like, is there another musical we've seen together? Um, My Fair Lady? Yeah, even my fair lady. Even though I did enjoy that it's one, ranting mostly. Yeah, with music I just in the background. I don't know. It just doesn't appeal to me, and that's okay. That's, huh. I don't hate people who like musicals, but anyway, quality. I thought that the acting was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Actually, quite good. It was somewhat confusing to me though for some reason because it took place in whatever time period. I don't know. Um, early nineteen hundreds. Yeah, some yeah. sometime not that long ago. But, like, I don't know what it was between knowing, like, it was just kind of confusing to me to, like, mm. know what time period it was and it almost felt like things didn't line up. Like, mm. I was expecting it, them to be in a certain place mm. at a certain time, but, like, it was not. Okay, you are in a very different setting from yeah. what you thought it was going to yeah, be. Yeah, it, it was a very different setting from what I thought it was going to be. Okay. But yeah, I thought the I thought the music was well done. The choreo chor choreography <laughs> choreography was well done. The acting was well done. The casting was good. So, what no. would hold this back from being a five in your mind? What What's that one thing you wish they'd done a little more? Is it just because it is a musical, yeah, which okay. almost would lead more into entertainment? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Something about the vibes just didn't like. I didn't like love them. Mm. I think like maybe this the color and the lighting and stuff was just yeah. not my favorite. And also they, the setting seemed kind of set like too. Did they? A little bit to me. A couple of them did maybe. Yeah. You know. But it nothing like it's just a like four. It wasn't like wow, but it mm -hmm. was just good. Gotcha. That was really long winded, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, I'm gonna deviate and give this one a five, which Shock. I. I feel like all the few 90s movies we've done, I tend to do fours just because I'm like, yeah, limitations, technology, whatever. I think I give this one a five because, as I mentioned, you know, it feels really big. I, I love the music. I love how real everything feels. There are a few things that do feel set-like. And to me, the things that felt set-like wasn't set-like like, I guess the circumstances in which they felt set-like was enough for me to be fine with it. Like, the whole graveyard scene. 
Very I, set light. I felt the wedding felt really set light too. Did you? The dance part, at least. Oh, okay. I didn't notice that. Um, but yes, the graveyard scene was very set. <laughs> but to me, that was fine because it was like in a dream kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the costumes were really good. I just love, I loved the cinematography and just how wide everything was. Um, I know with older movies, they tended to be a lot more theatrical than modern movies. Like, modern movies do lots of, like, close-ups, right? Yeah. Like, the joke is, people like to compare Joker, how they've sh um, shown him in film over the years. Like, the first Joker ever done was very big and gestural, and then there was, like, the, the Joker from, like, the 1980s, Jack Nicholson, I think, which was a little closer, and then there's, like, Heath Ledger's, which is, like, you know, very up-in-his-face kind of thing. Um, and that's just kind of the history of how film has just mm -hmm. changed, um, just because the only point of reference we really had for a long time was stage yeah. and theater. Um, and I think in this particular movie, it, like, it just suits it really well, mm -hmm. having it be so wide and big, and I, I just loved what they did with that. Um, yeah, I just felt like everything was very authentic. Everything was very well done. Every you could tell there was a lot of a lot of love put in this movie, and mm -hmm. like, they did it very well. Um, I think the only thing holding it, like the only negative, the only thing holding it back from no, a five point no, no. five. <laughs> no, the only th negative things I have to comment on, which isn't the movie so much as just some of the musical numbers, and I, I like musicals. Um, some of the musical numbers were just kind of forgettable and kind of corny, which I guess would go more into writing. Um, yeah, like, yeah, I think this is a very well-made movie. Like, very well-made. Um, you know, 1970s with what they had, it was, I think they did a very, very good job. That would honestly put a lot of movies now to shame. Yeah. Um, so, what would you rate it for writing? For writing? Uh, are you going to start with me? No, I want to start with myself. I okay. don't know why. I just felt the need to move on. Okay. So what does what writing include? Uh, writing includes... I don't know. <laughs> I don't have this one right. Um, uh, the overall story, character arcs, dialogue. Oh, yes. Things like that. Um, hmm. Well, like in this case, music. Before I share my rating, I'm going to discuss my feelings. Oh. Oh. It. Okay. All right. Not that that's it's that intense, but you know. Okay. So buckle up. I felt like it was pretty slow. Yes. Very rambling story. Mm hmm Um, my gripes with the story was so the movie wasn't basically about it wasn't like a love story. No. There were three love stories. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like. I don't know. And, like, that's coming, this is coming from someone who loves romance mm -hmm. in healthy contexts. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like nobody had, there wasn't super great chemistry with anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just really slow. And, like, it wasn't, like, dramatic enough. And, like, I don't yeah. mean dramatic, like, you know, mm -hmm. like screaming. But, like, it just wasn't, it didn't scratch my romance itch. Mm. So if there's any romance, it has to scratch the romance itch. Yeah, at least for me. Okay. Um, I prefer if all movies have romance in it. Wow. Okay. I consider it a net loss if there's no romance. Mm -hmm. Just like life. Two thumbs down. Boo. Yes. No, um, I would say that's my biggest complaint. Okay. I feel like maybe some of the characters back and forth were somewhat awkward feeling. Hmm. Like, what's her name? Which one? Who character? Uh, Tevi's wife. Golda? Golda. Golda. Um, I feel like some of the dialogue she had with people was kind of awkward. And, like, really? weird. Other than that, I would say, I'd probably give it a four for writing. Mm -hmm. Also, well, I don't know. I just, I wasn't satisfied with some parts of it. Like, I wasn't yeah. satisfied with model, hodl. Sorry. Huddle and that guy, like, leaving to Siberia. It just seemed like, I don't know, we didn't get a ton of, like, mm. development in the relationships. It kind of just seemed like they met these dudes. And, like, I know yeah. we yeah. could, we did get the sense that behind the scenes they were getting to know each other, but they just, like, met these guys and, like, left their family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just, I didn't like that. It wasn't enough for you. Yeah. 
Okay. And also, Matchmaker was a huge part of the story. Uh, speaking of which, what did you think of the Matchmaker character? She was interesting. She's kind of a weirdo, weird old lady. She's probably one of my favorite characters. Of course she was. Yente. 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 Um, oh, I wonder Yente's head's going to fall off into the mud and the horse is going to kick it. Yeah. <laughs> PK. No, but um, she was like a prominent character in the beginning of the movie and then she kind of like disappeared other than to like mm, pick through people's mm-hmm. mail. Um, and she didn't really do any successful matchmaking at all. No. Like, considering she was, like, the town matchmaker. Yeah, that was was just the joke of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't supposed to be super serious. It's like, the joke was literally she was picking whoever she felt like. That was the joke, but they made it seem like in the beginning that, like, it was her that did all the matching. Well, she probably did, but, like, it's, it's a joke. Like, it's supposed to be funny. Like, she's clearly not picking good matchmaking. But, like, people go with it because they hold her in high esteem. Because, because tradition? Yeah, tradition. It's just, it's supposed to be silly. Okay. Well, <laughs> either way, those are all of my complaints. I think I would give the writing a 3.5. 3.5. Oh, I'll bring out the points, the decimals. Yes. Womp, womp, womp. Hmm, writing. Um, I'm going to give this one a 4 because I think... There are a lot of aspects that are really good. I think ultimately this is about um, Tevye's... Tevye. Tevye, sorry. Tevye's um, character. And he's kind of the vessel who's challenging you know, the audience about like the whole idea of traditions and how things are done and just like the idea of change. Um, they did not do a good job at building some of the relationships. Um, the the most realistic one was definitely Seidel and M- Model, probably, mm-hmm. right? his relationship. They didn't even build that up a whole lot so much as just you kind of believed it because... Yeah. Because they're just They're like, the most chemistry. They're, they're just like, Seidel and Hoddle, they've been... Or Model, they've been best friends since childhood. Yeah. And then you, like, see in your mind that they've... Yeah. Been. So it's not like... I don't know. And... I felt like there was enough familiarity and organic chemistry between him and everyone else to feel like they'd known him for a while. Mm-hmm. The other ones, they, they kind of came and they happened and they weren't really built up at all. And time, they did not portray time passage very no, well. No, yeah, at all. no, they didn't. Um, it literally did seem like it all happened in like a span of a couple days. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is definitely a quote-unquote sin but putting all that aside, I think Tevye, Tevye's character, um, the, the, I found all the scenes where like he you know, was thinking and kind of working through things, as silly as they were, like whenever you know, there'd be that sudden vast distance between him and his daughters as he's like you know, wrestling with, do I let them do this? Do mm-hmm. I not let them do this? Um, the there was a couple songs specifically with his second daughter when she was leaving on the train, you know, and he's sitting there reflecting. That really touched me. Yeah, um, that was touching. I think the decision they had at the end, you know, him, you know, not wanting to give up his or feeling like he'd lose his identity if he let his last daughter, you know, go with the blessing of marrying this other person. Um. And just, like, essentially rejecting her and pretending like she didn't exist, which was very sad. But at the, um, the same time, it's somewhat understandable because at the beginning they establish how much they hold on to these traditions and mm-hmm. how important they are. Um, and, you know, he softens at the end and he, like, says a comment, like, you know, God be with you to yeah. his daughter and new husband. So meaning, like, he softened a bit. Um, Can I interject oh, a yeah. passage of time really fast? Like, in the beginning, we meet the three girls, and, like, mm-hmm. in my head, the impression I get is, like, Seidel is, like, 21 or whatever. Mm-hmm. Hoddle is probably, like, 18 or 19. Mm-hmm. And then the other girl kind of gives, like, 14-year-old vibes. Yeah. And, like, I feel like she doesn't really change. Like, she kind of gets no, more mature no, scenes, but, like, I, it really. literally feels like she's, like, 14 and married. Well, different, different culture, so mm-hmm. getting married that young. But, yeah. like... They're, like, waiting for Seidel to get married before they can get married. And so, like, Seidel yeah, waits, yeah. like, 21 years. And then mm-hmm. to marry her childhood best friend who she's been in love with for, like, yeah. 
And then, like, her 14-year-old sister is like, I found love randomly, too. Yeah. I don't think she was actually 14. But... No, no. She definitely felt very young. Um, was it Hava? Hava is her name? Hava. Uh, Something like that. Chava. Chava? No. I think it was Hava. Hava? Yeah, yeah. Hava, Hava. I think it was short Hava. for something. Yeah. She's the one I definitely felt the least connection to. Like, her song that her father sang about her at the very end didn't really touch me just because I hardly knew her at all. Yeah. Um, I felt like even though I do kind of excuse how rushed the relationship between the two other girls felt in these newcomers just because it did feel kind of like, it kind of felt like what most people would do in a situation like, oh, we've held to this way of thinking, but then suddenly someone else did something new. Mm -hmm. Now we're kind of eager to like do that too. Mm -hmm. So it just, it's kind of rushed, but like to me, it makes sense logically yeah. that they would kind of jump at the opportunity. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought there were really interesting themes that they touched on. They did a really good job whenever, um, you know, they'd have all the happiness happening and then mm -hmm. suddenly, you know, the... Um, I don't want to just say Russian because I know there was there was some sort of party, particularly in Russia. Were they the um, were they the communists? I don't I don't think so. They might have been, um, but yeah, that them coming in and you know, just upturning everything and being really nasty because they could. Yeah, I didn't really it, understand always... to the relationship between what's the guy's name, the dad's name. Tevia? Uh, Tevia and like the constable. Well, you just got the impression they knew each other for a long time. Yeah, I guess so. He, in this in the opening song, he makes a comment about how, you know, them, the Jews, and the the Russians, they just kind of mind each other's business and don't bother, mess with each other, and then suddenly, you know, things change. And then the ending was pretty sad, but it was kind of slow and dragged out, not as dramatic as I wanted it to yeah. be. Um, I couldn't. I, I couldn't help thinking of uh, the tale of Princess Kaguya the whole time, um, which you haven't seen yet. Studio Ghibli movie, um, which to me, as far as like entertainment goes, maybe one day we'll read it. Who knows? That would get a five for me because it starts in a very, very happy place, but like continues to become more and more and more depressing. But like it keeps you on the edge of your seat, kind of depressing. It's not becoming less entertaining because it's more depressing. They know how mm -hmm. to handle it in a way that keeps you interested. Whereas this one, it just kind of became like, no, we're just kind of dragging our feet through the dirt at this point and kind of waiting for it Packing to be Packing up the things yeah. in our little gross carts. We're taking too long to say goodbye to everything. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would, I would give this a four. There was, there was a lot of good, but. I think when all is said and done, this movie was just lacking drama. Yeah. Yeah. When it was fun and joyful and jaunty, that was its its peak. That was yeah. its best. It's just the drama aspect. It didn't handle as well as it maybe could have. Mm. Yeah. Content. Content. So content, yep. This is where we weigh the more quote-unquote negative aspects of the story um, or offensive parts, um, language, sexual content, violence, against the more positive aspects. The overall story itself, whether we felt it was justifiable or kind of just odd that it was there um so what would you give this one um i'd give it a probably a five you think so yeah i thought it was nothing offensive mm -hmm. no language yeah no sexuality mm -hmm. um just not super positive portrayals of marriage <laughs> yeah maybe not but like it wasn't like negative it was just kind of like mediocre portrayal of marriage yeah um yelling at each other pointing fingers yeah really was that Tevye? well kind of yeah Tevye and his wife mm, yeah i don't know yeah but I would... like I, the film never portrayed it in a positive light like no. you watched it and knew something was wrong yeah maybe but I, yeah i would say that anyone of any age could watch this would they be entertained probably not three-year-old mm. Probably not. Maybe not. But I thought, yeah, like, and there was even not really any scary moments. There's mm -hmm. that scene where they come and, like, destroy the wedding and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That's not scary. No, yeah. There's no peril. So, yeah, I'd give it a five. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd give this a five um, as well. Maybe kind of leaning towards four just because the, the, the little bit of that, I think, could be scarier to younger 
younger kids watching it, but overall it's not bad. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's a pretty clean movie, all things considered, mm-hmm. um, all aspects. Um, maybe maybe Tevye lying to his wife about the the dream uh, to yeah. <laughs> wasn't was probably the most negative, this but that was very fun, yeah. funny scene. Um, so overall rating. I'd give um, it, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. I would give it a four. Give it a four? Four yeah. is solid. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I don't know if it was, like, the, like, I enjoyed it less than I expected to. Okay, you were had So you did have higher expectations for it. Yeah. Okay. I would give this a 4 point almost. I might give it a 4.5. Yeah, I'd give it a 4.5. Just the the vibes of it do appeal to me. I think there are a lot of really good things about it. I think it's a very well-made film. There's just a few things that kind of hold it back. The ending, as we mentioned, kind of is slow. Um, but this is one that I could see myself watching a lot into the mm-hmm. future and watching with our kids and being very happy to watch it every single time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I could see this being a movie that we would watch. Yeah. But like... And not just begrudgingly or just watching it because we're no. watching it. Like, I could see it being one that would be like, ooh, let's watch this again kind of thing. Yeah. Because there's, there's a lot there. There's a lot there to appreciate. It and just, I think it's yeah. one that one would... I can see this one aging well as you get older. Not mm-hmm. you specifically. Just as you get older and experience more life and can relate to just being human more and just the themes. I think they'll probably start to speak to you more and more. Um. And probably just because they'll become more relatable, especially as parents and the whole daughter, you know, giving up your daughters for marriage situation. We're not going to do that. <laughs> We're not going to give up any of our children. None marriage. of them? Okay. No. If you say so. The Scott family name will die with us. <laughs> but yeah, I, I could, like I said, I'd give it a 4.5 because I do see this one being able to um, live long and well into the future. Mm. Even though you might not agree. <laughs> um, does Tom Hanks deserve a role in this if he had to replace anyone? No. Do you think he would take Tevye? No, I think he could take the constable. Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah. It's kind of boring, though. <laughs> no. I don't know if we should continue the Tom Hanks segment. You don't think so? You don't feel the passion anymore? I don't. Uh, the passion... Been desaturated. The passion for Tom Hanks is minimal. Oh, no, poor Tom Hanks. Oh, well, we gave you a shot. We gave no, him a shot. He had his him. run. We should replace him with someone else. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger? No. <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> Fine. All righty. Well, that was our that was our take on um, Fiddler on the Roof. Um, very fun movie. Pretty family friendly. We would recommend it. Um, yeah. Thank you all for listening. We hope you've been inspired to have some more conversation around the movies you're watching in general. Uh, maybe this one even. Uh, let us know what you thought of this in the comments. Um, let us know how we did on the ratings. Whether you agree with them. Whether you don't. Um, and until next time, good film hunting.